this next patch review uh, comes from Just a Fool. Just a Fool. Um, and they have 2.3k hours, so over double that time we're expecting. Most people know their basics in Dead by Daylight, both macro and micro fundamentals. Uh, they're playing the Zetamorph. The Zetamorph, who I wrote the guide on, so good person to ask. Um, very good killer. Ots is putting him like high B tier. IP plus tier, which makes sense. I, it's one of those things where I'm like, oh, well, they're pretty good, though. And then I look at all the characters above them. I'm like, yeah, most of those characters are better than you. That kind of makes sense. Uh, <laughs> um, you are on uh, RPD East, which is the better of the two RPDs. Um, RPD in general is a pretty all right Xenomorph map. Uh, the control station spawns are kind of uh, inconvenient, but there's a lot of really cool and neat shots you can do to circumvent otherwise troublesome loops for other killers. Um, you are doing add on list and mostly perkless, and I. Um, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this. I am thinking about making a rule about this because for a lot of the same reasons I have the rules like no AFK in the first like two gens and stuff like that is because if you're winning or losing because of AFK players, that doesn't really help me help you get better at the game. Um, so if you're intentionally handicapping yourself and limiting yourself on purpose and matches go bad, like, no die. you're not running add-ons or perks, <laughs> you know, like, that kind of defeats the purpose. So, not now, but I may eventually add a rule for this, because this is, like, the third one I've gotten, and it's always just kind of, like, underwhelming advice I give, because it's like, well, no die. you struggle, because you don't have add-ons or perks. <laughs> so, yeah, you do have Bamboozle, which is nice on Xeno, optimally stored with, uh, or paired with Self-Destruct Bolt. But obviously you're not running cap months, so yeah. Um, I can't say too much. I can't say too much about this, unfortunately, because you're intentionally limiting yourself. So, you got the game itself. Well. I like the choice to not wait and just immediately pop up. Unfortunately, I think they're on the second floor and you went to the wrong tube again. Not you again. There's somebody else. Look at the Xeno guide for the same reason. Th okay, you are doing the exact same thing that we had in the other match review where you're just not even looking at what tube you're going into. You're just going to them. You're just seeing the footfalls and popping up. You gotta look to see if the tube's short or long. If the, lo the tube is long, you're gonna go to the top floor. If the tube is short, you're going to the first floor. You're not checking at all. You're just kind of like going up and then getting very confused when you pop up in the wrong place because he didn't look. You gotta look before you go up. Oh, yeah. I would do that, horse. Yeah, and you could have stopped that, Jen, if you were actually looking. I like the choice to just leave that. And continue this chase. Make sure when you're swinging to save distance, you do it at a 180, otherwise it's just the same thing. Why do you keep checking your menu every two seconds? Why are you doing that? Not really like a critique or a view thing, I'm just confused. You sure? Okay, sounds good. I'll be happy to see you. I always want more people playing Xeno. So you're choosing to go for the early tunnel situation. She had animal not off the record. I'd have the ass. Uh, luckily she doesn't. You picked the right person. You should break that. There's no reason not to break that there. While carrying somebody, you already you already can't get into your power while carrying somebody. So it's like it's the perfect time to break turrets if it's convenient, because you already can't enter your power. So it's just efficient to break them. So definitely be doing that. You definitely get this? No, really. Yeah, I also think you should have got that. 
He just has a good thing, I guess. Is this just a match review of you tunneling one person uh, one by one out? It is. Okay. The only reason you're having to tunnel someone is because you made so many mistakes in your early game pressure. Well, unfortunately, because they're not a four man on comms, they're just gonna throw themselves at you and give you free pressure. Yeah, swing. If you're doing that trick, you, the, the, the reason that works is because you're lunging in the air and carrying yourself a direction. If you're just lunging the same direction you're falling, it doesn't do anything. Did you bring them here? Or did they bring you here? Looks like they brought you here. Also don't know why you're pausing. That's interesting. Yeah, they brought you here. Oh, well, I got on their face. RPs are pretty alright, Xeno. Map. Yeah, unfortunately, because they're not on comms, they just kind of like... ...threw themselves at you when you started tunneling, which is just going to snowball them for the rest. Game of tunneling the map offer? Maybe, but like, this is a good map for Xeno, so like... ...why? Also, it's good to see landing. Oh no, you sent me to a... a good map for me. <laughs> oh no. I'm pretty sure East, RPD East, is like the last A tier map for Xenomorph in my guide. Yeah, because it collides with collision, you gotta aim from like open air to the object and not the other way around. This object, you kinda can't tail attack around. You can Hellfire over it as Dracula, but like, Xenomorph can't really deal with that. Neither can Nemesis for similar reasons. I should. Dracula can, though. Yeah, I don't know why you keep doing that. If you do it at the hook, I guess it's gonna be just canceling noise, but... Nope, you're just randomly doing it, I guess, I don't know. I mean, I don't feel like... It's almost seems like a not a match for you. It's like, clearly you tell somebody out so early that, like... You were in control the whole time. Doesn't feel like really like a good example. It's almost like you're playing like you're on a win streak. But, like... There is no, no add-on only format. It's perkless, it's perkless or no loadout. So like, I don't know what the, I'm not really sure what's going on. Because no loadout would be both no add-ons and no perks. They're kind of a not good situation with that, because, like, somebody is inevitably going to get back on the gen either way. I do respect the idea that I just want to guard the middle one. You know anything about Vecna? I watch Archie and, um... I just met them the other day. They're lovely human. Begin with the end. There's another Vecna main I just started watching. It's also incredibly good. Also, um... Rev. Revium had a big Vecna, fa Vecna face for a while. They were very good. Breaking a brick wall that's in the building behind the lockers? 
what's your thoughts on breaking the brick wall that's in a in the building behind the lockers? They're normally a table with a lamp on it. Ornament. Okay, I was like, it was like, why don't RPD? Like, huh? Behind the lockers. Yeah, I, I can't visualize that. Yeah, that's the that's the bug palette. Bennett thought that that was a uh, sent me to this the other day and thought it was a Zeno specific thing. But that's just that palette just bugs on that side a lot. Are you talking about the one by the bar? Are you talking about the one by the generator? Gen you're by? Are you talking about the one right next to the staircase? Next to the generator? Any twin skins this week? No. I have not. Yes, that one I leave shut. Because that gives them easier access to the gen. Whereas otherwise they have to run around. Especially Xenomorph for me, like... There's a control station right there too, so they have better access to the, uh... Grabbing a turret if I break that wall. They lose here. She's stuck in this corner. Like, she cannot leave. Okay, well, you just let her go. When somebody's stuck in a corner like this, like, they can't do anything. You let them go by kicking that pallet. Especially with somebody slugged right there, like, Kate has to come to you. There's no reason to let her go there. Go, go for the shot. You can hit the shot here over the stair. These, these, these stair railings on both sides you can over, both from the bottom and from the top. So I would have gone for that there. Nice, good shot. Yeah, they're kind of... Kind of don't come back from this no matter what they do. Even with the good gen progress they had, they just weren't on comms. If these guys had comms... I want to see this for a second. If they were on comms, like, they would have just cranked the gens and got out. The only reason you win this is because they're not on comms. I want to see that, that game board for a second. Yeah, Fung's not even the one who brought it, so you just, like, hard-tunneled Fung out for, like, no reason. They still got all the gems done. Yeah, if, if even, like... If these guys were even probably in, like, partial comms, like a three-man, you don't win this. You win this because of the lack of communication that they had, and not because you actually, like, outplayed them. If Fung has DS, you use this game. I want to point that out, too. If Fung has DS, or you pick to tunnel somebody else in this game who has DS, you lose. You have, I was say, you have Bamboozle, just swap the Linda. Feels like you kind of forget you had Bamboozle. Even though it's your only perk, you kind of forgot you had it most of this game. I didn't really see you shutting down a lot of window setups. Okay. This is an interesting one. This feels like a non-match for you almost. I think it's funny because you still almost lost this. Um. In terms of your... Your main takeaways? This is an interesting one, because realistically, the only reason you win this is because they're not a four-man, or they're not even a three-man, probably. They don't seem very coordinated, because essentially what started happening is the moment you started chasing Fung, and you decided to tunnel her, hard tunnel her out of the game, the they started, like, throwing themselves in the way for her, and, like, realistically, if they were together, even if they were just, just a three-man, they just crank the gens and get out. Like, this ends at a two out at best for you. But because, luckily for you, and that's the key word, luckily for you, they were not together. So you just get to take advantage of that. Um, that's, that's a, it was a risky play. 
And in terms of the match reviews, we always talk about consistency. So just kind of like hoping that they are not a four man on comms or hoping that they're not a three man on comms for, for your success. Like, you know, like that's a big risk. So it's not something I would do consistently because you're kind of just, I think any strategy that kind of like takes advantage of a lack of comms will blow you up. Obviously, once you get against comms and in terms of consistency and being the best play, player you possibly can be, you should be prepared for all scenarios, not just the ones that you can take advantage of. Um, your second takeaway is, you, despite the fact that Bamboozle is the only perk you brought, you don't really like use it very often. And I know it may be confusing because it's like the only thing you have, <laughs> so you may be just kind of acting like you're doing no loadout. But please make sure to get... Uh, value out of your perk make sure you're faulting and shutting things off especially in that like last chase where you're just like kind of like trying to bait her into doing something dumb when you could just vault the window and end the chase in like two seconds <laughs> there's a lot of scenarios in this game where uh, bam may have been more valuable but you just kind of like played it normally instead um i know even if bong had ds there you, you lose too because they got all the gens done one extra chase of like 20 30 seconds does lose you the game here so you just kind of just got lucky that nobody in this game was running DS. Because if they were, you do lose here. Also, make sure you're cleaning up your turrets. You had a couple opportunities to destroy turrets that were like very easily bothering you. Uh, but you like bypassed them, especially that one time when you were carrying um, Fung and you could have just smacked the turret right there as you were going to the hook, but you just didn't. So make sure you're getting rid of your turrets.